I just got back from Thailand and I've been thinking about the trip and thinking about all of the amazing experiences that I had and what I gained from going, what I learned from going. And I wanted to share that. I thought that, first of all, I needed to let you know about the things that I bought and whether they worked or not, whether I liked them or not. So I need to give you my thumbs up or thumbs down ratings. But I also wanted to share, because I think there's such opportunity for us to reflect on the choices we make and reflect on experiences. Like you shouldn't just have an experience and then move along and go on your merry way. You should take time to reflect on what that experience brought to you, and maybe even what would you have done differently? If you have another opportunity like that, what would you do differently going forward? What do you want to do more of? And so I think it's really important to not only unplug like I had the opportunity to do when I went to Thailand, although there was a lot of go, go, go too, but I made sure to have some times where even though things were scheduled, I went and got a massage or I went and walked and did something on my own, went to the beach. So I I did purposefully carve out some downtime because when you do go on trips, sometimes you mean to unplug and you're scheduled to the hilt. So you have to be careful of that. But I do think that when you come home, the tendency is to go back to your normal routine very quickly. And what I chose to do probably for the first time ever is I got home and I knew I was going to get home like midday and old Lori would have gone back to work that afternoon, but I knew I was going to be tired. So I was like, no, I'm not going to go back to work. I'm even going to take the next day off. So I actually took a day and a half off after I got home. And that allowed me to have time to reflect. And I've continued to reflect. And I spent some time thinking about what I wanted to share. I think that's what's important is I think you need to sit with that. And what bubbles to the top is always going to be the most important. And so that's what I am choosing to share with you today. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you take the opportunity to unplug sometime very soon because it is well worth it. Welcome to another episode of Living Your Spark Second Half. This episode is one that I promised. I'm doing a rehash of my Thailand trip. The things I learned in Thailand, it's the things that when I sat down to write about what I wanted to share for my trip to Thailand, these are the things that came up. And of course, I always like to do things intuitively. If it comes up, if whatever the first things that come up are, are the things that are the most important that I need to share. So I I came up with six things. And the last thing is what items that I had purchased for the trip were a hit, were the things that I felt provided me with the most value. I did a podcast episode before I left on 11 or 12 things I purchased for the trip. And so I'm going to save that for last. All right. So first of all, number one, what I learned on my trip to Thailand is that long airplane rides aren't so bad. I was so worried about going on an airplane for more than eight hours. I've never been, I think eight or nine hours is the longest that I've been on an airplane going over to Europe. Or maybe Greece was the furthest that I've been on an airplane. And usually With And I think with Greece, I changed planes somewhere. I think I changed planes in Paris. So I've never been on a plane for 14 hours, which is what it was to go to Dubai. And it ended up being 15 and a half hours because there was a really bad storm. If you looked at the weather 
forecast. Perfect weather all week, except for the few hours that I was landing in Dubai for my layover. And it was a bad storm. Fortunately, our connection wasn't missed because they weren't letting planes leave. That's how bad it was. And they wouldn't let us land. So we were circling the airport in clouds. So I didn't enjoy that. But the flight itself, let me tell you, if you ever have a chance to fly Emirates, fly it because it really, even in economy, feels like luxury. The plane was so, so big. One was larger than the other. One was, I think, close to 100 rows and one was probably 60 or 70 rows. The second plane that we went from Dubai to Bangkok in was another seven hours. So two long flights. Usually a long flight to me is going to California from Virginia, which is five hours. So two long flights. And they had the, if you have been on a big plane, the formation of three, five, three. So the middle is five seats and the aisles are three seats. So you really can't get two seats together except on an Emirates. On Emirates, they have a few two-seat options. If you're flying in a pair, it's perfect. I was flying with someone, so she and I were able to get two seats. So you're not trying to wake somebody up. And on the long flight, people sleep a lot. That was fantastic. So I highly recommend Emirates and look for that two-seat combo. And they have really nice bathrooms. They have bathrooms that you can actually turn around in. And they even have this fake wood. It's like probably stick them, but it looks it looks fancy. So I felt like it was more of a nice bathroom uh, than any plane I've ever been on. Uh, and I also got fed really well. We had three meals, three meals on the 14-hour flight. And of course, we were fed on the other one, but I've never been on a flight where we have three meals in one flight. So that's the first thing that I learned was I won't hesitate to go on another long flight because what the trip gave me from going that far was so totally worth the long flight. And the jet lag didn't really bother me. So I was very lucky about that. All right. Number two, it is so cheap in Thailand. I was shocked. I will say that the flight was more expensive than most, but if you think about it, those long airplane rides, it costs more money. It costs more gas. The seats that we got, the two, were a little bit of an upcharge, just like when you get an economy plus seat, but wasn't much of an upcharge. I think it was between $1,900 and $2,000 for our round trip flights there. But then once we got there, it was so dang cheap. So just as an example, a 20-minute cab ride, because we had to spend the night in Bangkok and then catch a flight the next morning to go to the resort where we were staying. The, the cost of a cab ride from the airport to our hotel was 300 baht. Baht is their currency. That might sound like a lot, right? $300? $8.25 for a cab ride, 20 minute cab ride. Our hotel in Bangkok was only $29 and we shared a room. So it was half of that for me, $14 and 50 cents to stay in a pretty nice hotel, beautiful view with a swimming pool <laughs> and a 90 minute full body massage was 650 baht, $17 and 88 cents. So of course, with tip, less than $20 for a full body 90 minute massage. So guess what? I had three over the course of the week. <laughs> Who wouldn't, right? So number three, what I learned in Thailand is it reinforced my desire to do more yoga. I'm not a big yoga freak by any stretch. In fact, I just signed up for my first in-person yoga class and went to it last Saturday in my town where I live. I've done an in-person with my daughter where she lives, but I have not done one where I live. And so, yeah, I, I 
just refell in love with yoga. The person who host the yoga retreat that I went on. I went, like I said, uh, um, I've said on past episodes, I've had her even on my podcast, but this is the second retreat that I've been on with her. I had gone to Greece with her and she is the best. She is the best. And I get spoiled with her and I go on these retreats and there's just nothing like a 90 minute session with her. So it was really fun to get reignited and to take action when I got home on signing up. I I signed up for a month unlimited pass. There was something about waking up first thing in the morning. And this is how it went on the retreat. Waking up as the sun was coming up, walking out of my bungalow a few yards up to the little area where they served breakfast, where they have French press. You just make your French press coffee in the morning. It was delightful because I just started drinking French press in January. And so I was like so delighted when I saw that we had our own little French press machines to make our coffee in the morning. Made my little French press, brought it back to the room, got in my yoga clothes, went up to yoga, the yoga studio, um, which was at the other end of the resort, from 7 30 to 9 o'clock every morning where we had this really great sweaty yoga class and then we leave yoga at nine o'clock and walk down and have this most delicious breakfast and that's how we started our day so i thought what a beautiful way to wake up in the morning and to feel so energized you've gotten this adrenaline and endorphin hit before it's even nine o'clock in the morning. And there was just something about that, kind of waking up as the sun was rising and doing that. So it reignited my love for it so much that I not only signed up for in-person yoga classes for the next month, you know, recommitment to doing it more often and more frequently, I am signed up for getting certified as an instructor. And it's funny because it's something that I thought about before I left to go. Don't think I never have done yoga except when I go on retreats. Um, I do videos. I do yoga workouts from the comfiness of my basement. But I think one of the things that was reignited in me that comes with these yoga retreats is a connection with people. And I don't get that when I work out in my basement. While working out in my basement is convenient and it's easy to get a workout in, I realized with the connections that I made at the retreat, I really wanted to have more connections with that practice. And so going to an in-person class will give me that. While I was doing a yoga workout recently in my basement, I had this thought of, my gosh, I I really feel this nudge to get certified as a, as a teacher. And it's not so much that I want to go and be an instructor at a studio, but I want to use the practice in my retreats that I have. I want to be able to understand the foundation, the philosophy that yoga is built on and the breathing techniques and the physiology of the body. There is so much to yoga that is fascinating to me and that I know by learning, I could incorporate into my coaching business and my retreats and how I help people. So that really came from somewhere deep inside because I felt nudged before I left. And when I was There at the retreat, I brought it up to the host who I knew from the previous retreat. And she said, Hey, I am starting a yoga teacher training in August and it's full, but if you want to come in, I'll let you come in. And so I was like, Oh my gosh, if that's not the universe putting something right in front of me that I feel nudged to do. And when that happens, you take action. So that's number. Three, 
the reigniting of my love of yoga and actually taking it to the next level. All right, number four, uh, I want more adventures in my life. And I want to share those experiences with other people. A combination of me going on more adventures to light myself up internally, like this retreat just did for me. And I want to host more retreats. And in case you didn't know, I hosted my first in-person retreat, which has been a dream of mine for a long time, last September. So I'm getting ready to announce my next retreat. It's in the U.S. It's not international, although I'd like to expand to an international retreat. Uh, but that's what I want to do. I want to focus on just embracing the experience of adventures and travel and connecting with other people and sharing that experience with people, whether it's me attending a retreat or me hosting the retreat. So I've got some things I'm cooking up and I'm very excited about as it relates to that. But that's what fills my soul at the moment. I want to be able to give people what I experienced in, in these retreats because they open channels internally that are really hard to create and open up when you're in your day-to-day, -day, when you're in your the everyday world and you go off and you go these places, it, it opens you up to things that you hadn't imagined. So I want more adventures. Uh, number five, I learned to have a deeper appreciation in many things. I think partly because the people in Thailand are such warm, happy, grateful people that it made me have more of a sense of returning that, the gratitude. It was just like this energetic exchange of gratefulness. It just gave me deeper appreciation for the beauty of the world we live in. The fact that I was on a beach somewhere in Thailand on the other side of the world was pretty phenomenal. That I was able to travel in a plane to get there. And it wasn't so possible not too long ago to go far places. And here we can jump on a plane and be somewhere in 24 hours. And Thailand was a really beautiful place. So the beauty of the world we live in, I gained a, a new sense of that, um, of the cultures, the variety of cultures. I was talking about the different money. I never knew what a bot was until I went there. I didn't know how to say thank you in Thai. And it's not really thank you. They don't have thank you. They give respect which is a bow. So just learning these things, you know, it's never too late to teach an old dog new tricks is what I like to say. So just learning about different cultures and meeting people unlike me is something that I truly appreciate. The opportunity that aging brings, uh, I think that what aging has brought me is is more patience and more ability to, and through the work that I've done internally, it's made me be more open to, put it this way, I don't look at things and make an immediate assessment based on my past experiences or my knowledge or my lack of knowledge, because a lot of our perception is based on our limited experiences and lack of knowledge. And these judgments are harmful. They close us off and they don't open us up. And so I feel like I gained a deeper appreciation th th that I'm able to do these things at the age I am. When I was younger, I would have never had the perspective that I have now. So the, the opportunities that are brought to me and the fact that I'm open to the exploration of them is, is something that I really appreciate. 
I gained a deeper appreciation for unplugging and I gained a deeper appreciation for challenging my body. There was a thought I had at the retreat, maybe it was in the middle of a yoga workout, but I remember thinking, this thought flitted through my mind of, am I too old for this? Or a, when is this going to end kind of thought? Like, I'm 65. How much longer can I do this? And that thought scared me. That thought made me think, I want to do this as long as I can possibly do this. And nobody has any kind of prescription on what is possible. We don't know. And everybody's different, number one. Nobody can predict the future. And the only thing that I have control over is how I treat my body today. And if I treat my body right, and if I keep it in shape, I can do yoga for a long time, but I have to take care of myself. I can't be skipping workouts, sitting on the couch, eating bonbons. I need to keep exercising and keep taking care of myself. And so challenging my body with a deeper yoga practice is something that I gained. I gained that perspective on this trip. So deeper appreciation for those things, the beauty of the world we live in, the different cultures of the world and meeting people and connecting with people, uh, the opportunity that aging brings, the unplugging and how important unplugging is for us and challenging my body and continuing to challenge it as long as I can. Those things that was a gift to, to gain this new perspective and appreciation. And then number six, what you might have been waiting for are the purchases that I made that I felt truly paid off. So I'll start with the quick ones. Compression socks by Sockwell. Yes, thumbs up, big thumbs up. First of all, the I was really worried that, because I was going to be wearing these socks for a long time, Given the extensive time I was on planes, I never felt uncomfortable. They didn't grip me like I've heard. Now, granted, my my calves aren't really big, but they were actually loose around my ankles. I was almost worried that they weren't tight enough. Forget what they're called, descending or ascending compression. So the higher up the sock went, the more it pressed. But it's still, it was fine. They were fine. They were like wearing regular socks, honestly. I did not have any swelling. And so I was so happy about that. Um, the Bev ledge that I got, the little insert that when you stick it inside the little crevice of your airplane window, the second I did that, the flight attendants told me to take it off. So they don't like you to put those things on the window. I don't know why. They were very rules oriented on our flight emirates the emirates uh flight attendants but i can understand if you're going on, on an overnight flight they probably don't want the windows up so uh, you can't put the window down when you have that so the bevel edge was kind of a, like a thumbs down a disappointment because i couldn't really use it the gummies i know i had some interest from people who wanted to know how the gummies went i really didn't use the gummies on the airplane i get so excited on the airplane and i Honestly, I had them with me, but I forgot about them. And I did use them one night when we were in the resort, at the resort, because my my uh, roommate was sick and she got a cold and she had a cough. Fortunately, she it was the beginning of the trip. The worst, first couple of nights were the worst. And so I gave her some gummies. I, I took some gummies and I, they... They made me probably a little tired, but they didn't knock me out and I didn't feel any effects from them at all. She said that she felt a little groggy maybe the next day from them, but it could have been her illness or her cold too. I don't know. So the gummies, I can't really, I mean, no thumbs up or thumbs down because I don't really give them a chance. Uh, the inflatable neck pillow, definitely 
thumbs up. I loved it, although I left it on the last plane. <laughs> when I realized after our, we had gotten uh, too far that I had left it on the airplane, I hadn't deflated it and put it in my backpack uh, as I should have done when I stopped using it. But it inflated with like four puffs and deflated super easy. So I really, I'm going to buy another one next time I go on a long trip. The air tag that you stick inside your suitcase so you know where your suitcase is, that was such a peace of mind. Big thumbs up for that. Uh, we had a really close connection in Dubai and uh, the weather was really bad. I would have been really worried that my luggage might not have made it, but we ended up having plenty of time. Yet at the same time, I was still able to check my luggage to see where my luggage was. And before we took off on our second leg, I checked and sure enough, my luggage was right in the same plane with me. And so that was fantastic. I was able also to track it when we landed coming back into customs because you know sometimes how they you don't get through customs as fast as your luggage it was so nice to know where your luggage was and so that was a positive purchase i would say totally worth the money and then my two biggest wins in terms of purchases was the biagi products i got a backpack and i got a hanging I forget, it's called zip hanging shelves or something. I took pictures, which I'm going to post on social media, but they're essentially it's shelves. It's made out of the same kind of material that you would make a suitcase out of or a backpack out of. So it's kind of soft, but sturdy. So it's like three shelves. I did a podcast episode in the very end of February or early March where I shared all of these things. And so I had pictures of them. There was a picture of it without clothes in it. Before I had this, I would roll my clothes and put them in my suitcase. So you basically fold your clothes like in the olden days when you used to just fold your clothes and put them in your drawer. You fold them and you put them in the shelves. You hang the shelves and you just fold your clothes and put them in the shelves. Then what you do is you take the shelves off from the hanging and you smush it. You smush it and it's got a buckle that you can like cinch. And so you just cinch those buckles to make it as tight as possible. So it compresses it. It takes this big hanging shelf and it compresses it to like a third of its size and then you throw that in your suitcase. And it does take up some room. I, I actually had a suitcase, a large suitcase that I checked. I checked my bag because I didn't want to lug carry-on. It would fit in a carry-on, but it would probably be the only thing that would fit in the carry-on so you wouldn't have room for other stuff. It was amazing. And I, I had that and plenty of room for other stuff. So I put other clothes, like a raincoat I wanted to take, which I never even used. So I had room for other stuff in my suitcase, which was nice. So when you get to the place you're going, you unbuckle it and then you just take it out of your suitcase and you hang it in the closet. So you don't have to take all of your clothes out of your suitcase and put them in drawers. You just basically leave them hanging in this. It's a cube. That's what it's called. It's a hanging cube. And then when you're done on your trip, you just compress it, put it back in your suitcase and you go. So it saves you that extra hour of getting organized in your hotel room and saves you some packing time. So I thought it was a fantastic idea. I was so pleased with it. And I was really glad we took it too because the place where we stayed didn't have a dresser. It, it had a, a big wardrobe and a couple of areas that had like a shelf or two. And so my roommate was able to use those shelves and then I just hung this cube in the wardrobe and there was still other room in the wardrobe for stuff to hang, like, you know, sh shirts, blouses, dresses that we had, like sundresses that we had, beachy kind of stuff. So that worked out fantastic. So very happy with my purchases as a whole. 
that is all I have for you. Those are the main six points of what I came away with from my most amazing trip to Thailand that was top of my list of adventures of my lifetime. But it won't be the last. Lots more adventures to come. So keep hanging with me and you'll be hearing about the things as the opportunities open up for me, things that I see. I already have some ideas of things that I want to do going forward. Spain is on my list. Going back to the castle in Scotland is on my list. Uh, Morocco is on my list. So lots of really fun things that make me feel very excited about what's to come. I hope you have some exciting things coming in your life and I'll see you next time. 